market and uh, we are uh, very fortunate to have um, Randall Bird with us. He's a uh, Scotch whiskey ambassador, Scotch yeah. ambassador. What is a Scotch ambassador? It uh, means I get to go to ribbon cutting ceremonies and I wear a sash and yeah. Yeah. go to the UN, but no. Uh, <laughs> I, I have the pleasure of representing some great brands, including uh, the Glenfiddich uh, tonight, and um, I get to drink their whiskey for free and talk to people about it, which is just a lot of fun and just a great, great time. So that's super. Um, I mean, I call it, I have been calling it Glen Fittich all my life, but it's, and how does, uh, how's the spelling work in Scotland, you know? Um, it's, the more you drink whiskey, the easier it becomes, <laughs> but I, I think, I think most people uh, pronounce, uh, in Scotland, would pronounce it more of a Fittich. Fittich, okay. But Fittich, uh, everyone's going to understand exactly what you're saying, but okay. means Valley of the Stag, Glen, Valley, and Fittich, uh, the Stag or Deer. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, I hear that Glenfiddich is what, number one Scot uh, single malt scotch in the world? Yeah, um, it kind of trades places with a few other world famous ones. Uh, Glenlivet and Glenfiddich are almost always in the top two category. Well, so why is that? Uh, as people's tastes change, as, as marketing things happen, um, they've both been around for a long time, in, especially in the United States market, as a single malt, much longer than most of the other single malts. And so uh, they're very famous, and people are very brand loyal. They like, if you like Glenfiddich, you love Glenfiddich. If you like Glenlivet, uh, you could have that same loyalty as well. So, okay. very good. So, today we have four different scotches here, single malts. Can you quickly walk us through what the difference sure. is? All right. So, Glenfiddich Distillery is, of course, a classic Speyside distillery. Um, it's in Scotland, in a town called Dufton. And Dufton has several different distilleries. Another one uh, which is closely associated with the Glenfiddich is the Balvini. And using the exact same ingredients, 100% uh, malted barley, water, and yeast, they're making a variety of different products because all the same juice comes off the still, the same spirit comes off the still, but by aging it for 12 years in American oak, which is the 12-year expression, which is the flagship expression of Glenfiddich, world famous. Um, they're getting one type of taste by putting it into a Solera vat in the 15 year. Uh, they're getting a slightly different taste. And as we're going up in age, the cost goes up a little bit, but you're also getting more flavor and a longer finish. The 18 is small batch, uh, meaning much less number of barrels in the um, actual batch that they're making for the 18. And of course, the Grand Reserve 21, which is uh, finished in some Caribbean type casks and giving it just a very rich, delicious dessert type of flavor. So all from the Glenfiddich Distillery, all start out and they're very, uh, you know, infant baby steps as the same kind of juice that comes off the stills. But by changing the type of wood and how long they're aging it, they're getting very, very different flavors. And all delicious uh, in my estimation. I think a lot of people have enjoyed them here tonight and will continue to enjoy them for years to come. So. Okay, great. Thank you. And now uh, let's talk about uh, there are a number of other expressions too Glen Fiddich makes, right? Sure. And uh, can you run us through some of them or um, uh, or what they're going to come well, in the future or what was yeah. done in the past? So they're, they're going to do most of their production for the United States or uh, a particular area. They're going to concentrate on what they can advertise and what they can really get a, a brand following of. Yeah. And they always like to mix it up with something that's a little bit different to give their fans and customers uh, something that they can try as a different uh, different from their typical expressions. So depending on the region of the world and also where they are at with their production, they will see variations, but the Glenfiddich has dialed in, at least for the United States, to the 12, 15, 18, and 21. And uh, we're looking at this for the next few years, at least. Um, and then if you go to some duty-free areas where you're traveling extensive in other parts of the world, you can find some different expressions. But most of what you're going to see here in the United States is going to be uh, these four brands. And occasionally they might do like a special anniversary one if they were to come up on the distillery anniversary or something like that. But I don't know of anything in the works right now for the Glenfiddich distillery. Fantastic. Great, Randall. So should we talk about Balvin? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, now, I understand that Glenfiddich and Balvin are owned by the same company or yes. same family or because it seems like everyone is buying everybody else. You know, it's just too much movement in um, Scotland and even sure. like in you know bourbons, for example. 
So what's going on with these So uh, William Grant & Sons is actually a family-owned business. William Grant was the founder of the Glenfiddich Distillery and his family, sons and some daughters included, helped hand build the distillery uh, on the side of the, the mountain or the, the hill. And um, they also, uh, just down the road, um, kind of rolled into a distillery called the Balvini, which is named after the Balvini Castle, which is a, a very ancient castle that predated the, the Grant family, uh, but on the distillery grounds or right next to the distillery. And the Balvini is more of the handcrafted expression of the Glenfiddich line, but uh, to speak to corporations buying and all these other things, uh, William Grant has staked much of their reputation and hundreds of years or uh, however long they've been in business on really trying to do two core Scotch whiskey brands and not try and bring all sorts of different things into the mix. But what they've done with the approach is a large kind of high production uh, facility for the Glenfiddich and a smaller handmade product that you're going to see with the Balvini. Still family owned, still a handful of very important employees. Uh, at each of those distilleries and still making great exceptional product, just a slightly different approach to how they're doing it. Okay. So what's the difference between handmade and what's it called machine-made or how would you... Uh, it's uh, like it's more of an industrial plot process. What most people fail to understand is even though that they could be making it on a much larger scale and they might specify malted barley or water to a particular standard or scientific uh, measurement, um, at the Balvini, because their production run is proportionately smaller than the Glenfiddich, more human hands are going to touch parts of the process. So uh, they may get their barrels from a cooperage at Glenfiddich, but they actually have a small cooperage on site in the Balvini uh, grounds and their own coopers that only work on Balvini barrels. And they'll help out, of course, with the Glenfiddich distillery yeah, from time to time, but making specific barrels uh, for their products. They have their own coppersmith um, at the Balvini, and they do floor maltings or hand turn and uh, work with the grain and the fermentation process a little bit more directly than some of the stuff that may be outsourced or be moved with heavier equipment. Um, type of uh, material movement that you might see with big forklifts and things at Glenfiddich. They might have some guys with some hand carts moving that around at the Balvini distillery. Um, the end result is that they're both great, great products but coming from different angles on how they're made. And I think the Balvini you're going to find, um, in addition to some really interesting facts and things on the bottles and canisters, uh, it translates to some interesting tastes. It's been kind of the pet project of William Grant and then specifically uh, Dave Stewart, the master blender and um, distiller from the William Grant company. This is kind of his pet project or his baby as far as making some great, great tasting uh, products and really experimenting and pushing the envelope with that. Good. Anyone else have